is not an object. Emptiness is not a thing. Emptiness, you can't locate it. You can't say this is emptiness. You can't say that. But you know, if you use a sort of metaphor or example, it's not a good metaphor, but anyhow, let us see. Look at space, Raum in German, space. Space is not a thing. Things can be in space. Sun, moon, clouds, air, trees, you and me are in space. But space is not a thing. See, remember, space is not a thing. And of course, you can't even compare space to emptiness. Is emptiness more than that? You see, but anyhow, I see a sort of example I use. Space is not anything. Space lets be things. Let's be. Without space, the sun cannot be there, moons cannot be there, stars cannot be there, you and I cannot be there, you and I, there is space between you. Only then, you are there, I am here. If there is no space, you are all compressed in one atom, that's all. <laughs> if it's no space, one atom, nothing else, you see. And so space makes you, lets you be. Space gives you sort of spaciousness. But you know, paradoxically, paradoxically, space is yourself. See, see the point. You think you are in space in emptiness, but space is yourself. Emptiness is yourself. That you know, it's a paradoxical. You see, you are a particular being, space in emptiness, so to say. But also you are the spaciousness, space itself. And in that sense, you embrace all the world. All the world sort of, uh, are sort of taking place in you. That is emptiness. You are two sides. On one side we can talk about, say let me say one, one example, simply one example. <coughs> They talk about ordinary consciousness desire. Everybody can have ordinary consciousness desire. Even dogs, cows are conscious and have desire, so to say. But there is another level, they call it second order desire and consciousness. What is second order desire consciousness? You are aware of awareness. You are aware of your desires. It is meta-consciousness. Meta means above, you see. On one level you are conscious, you are aware and all those things. And meta level is one level above. You are aware that you are aware. You see, you are aware that you are conscious. You are aware you have got desires. You are aware that you are sort of thinking thoughts. But that meta level, how do you locate it? That's the point. How do you locate it? This first level, you can locate it. I am body, I am conscious, this, that, and so on. But in the second order level, meta level, you can't locate it. See, that conscious level, conscious of conscious, that level, you can't locate. And that level only, very often we say, you know, the self cannot be located. The self is like a horizon. The more you try to see it, the more it disappears. Simply, ordinary example, if you ask, who are you? Who is asking, who are you? You can't grasp the who you are asking. It is always goes beyond, beyond, beyond. That's a meta level, so to say. You can't grasp. You see, all the time, that level, and that level is sort of like a space. It's embracing the whole universe. It cannot be located. See, you cannot locate it. It cannot be objectified. That level, you cannot lo locate, objectify. And that's why, you know, the Sen calls it, in one sense, you know, so, it is no abstraction to be in emptiness. Look at that. You are in space in one level. And does a space abstract you? 
I mean, uh, light obstruct you. How can it obstruct? It's not obstruct you. At the same time, it is fullness because space embraces the whole universe. It you are yourself embrace the whole universe. It is a full alive. And <coughs> talking about I and so on, real I and so on. You see, that is what you call emptiness. Real I in Buddhism will say there's no I, anatta, no self. No self simply means you can't objectify the self. You can't grasp the self. The self is not a thing. It can't be located. And so it's no self. In a Hume set, you know, I look into myself, philosopher Hume, you see, I don't see a self. Of course, you can't see the self, but who is looking? That's the whole question, you see. Who is looking? And so, you can't grasp the self, who is looking? And so, this one side, ordinary self, our ego self, we can grasp, we can locate, and so on. But the, the metta self, you can't locate. But are they two? They are not two also. They are one. How are you, how they are the one? Only in action. You present yourself. That is the whole koan practice. You present yourself. Both self come together. You see, you are here and now. And your whole life is like that. You are acting. Acting means you simply act totally, fully. You are present there. The whole self, the meta self and the ordinary self becomes present. They are not two. And so form is emptiness, emptiness form, so to say. So remember this. So I need not talk too much on these things, you see. So emptiness, awakening to emptiness is this dimension you awaken. It is all the time there, but you know, you are not awakened. We are asleep. We are only holding this small cell, only myself, preserve this, hold this, secure this. No. You are more than that. How do you awaken to this dimension? When you are awakened, you must be grounded in that dimension all the time. You see? All the time be grounded. That is our peace. That is our inner freedom. That is our joy, so to say. And so, this self somehow comes to abide in that emptiness. But emptiness is yourself. It's a paradoxical, religious language paradox. It is this and that, and not this and not this. And so you must use this language like that. And so this is our practice. So practice and so on. But finally, let me also, for the ordinary life, say, uh, learn to live ordinary life. You know, sense says, you know, nonsense, you know, Joshua, the great master, Joshua asked the master nonsense. What is the way? Way means Tao. The way means the Zen way, enlightened way, the great way, the cosmic way. What is the way? Nansen answered, ordinary mind is the way. Ordinary mind. What is ordinary mind? Eating, laughing, crying, walking, ordinary mind. At the same time, he says, you know, in the middle part he says in the Koan, read that Koan, I think, Koan Munka 19, he says, you know, knowing is illusion, not knowing ignorance. And if you realize this ordinary mind, it's a vast incomprehensible. It's like the beyond the universe. Third dimension, one dimension is vast, unlimited, boundless. Another dimension, ordinary life. Practice ordinary life. Live your life. At the same time, a deep dimension, you are grounded in the boundlessness. You are grounded, you are grounded in the eternal dimension. That thing, you see. And so, move in both dimensions. But you know, it's not both dimensions. Only one dimension. Live. Ordinary mind. Live. But this awareness, you see, the koan says, a nice koan, miscellaneous koan, let your mind come forth, abiding nowhere, let your mind come forth. Abiding nowhere, that is emptiness. 
Let your mind come forth. How do you let your mind come forth? How? That's ordinary. Walking, sitting, eating, crying. That's all. Let your mind come forth. Mind means self. Come forth every time. That's an ordinary mind. But abiding nowhere. That is your ground. But you don't be talking about, thinking about this. No. Just live your life. That is, you know, that is what, you know, the first question, what you call so right, suchness. Be just, just be. That is it, just be. You are grounded in that. Just be, just be. Every moment, every moment.